Hello everybody, I'm Lonnie with Everything Nature and today we are going to be learning about what makes rodents rodents. We're going to be looking at what makes them unique amongst themselves and also some common shared traits that all rodents have. So stick around and I hope you learn something new. All rodents are in the family Rodentia, and 40% of all known mammal species are rodents. Now, of all those rodent species, how many can you name? Most commonly thought of are mice and rats. But what about the other two? Why don't they get any love? Probably because they're not so busy stealing our Pop-Tarts, chewing holes in our walls, and crawling into our hearts. Rodents do have a pretty bad image with most of the human race. What with their spreading disease and eating crops and causing famines at various points in history. We will choose, however, to ignore these trespasses for this show and focus on what really matters, like how cool their skulls are. Besides, there's a lot more to rodents than just mice and rats, like capybaras, cavies, naked mole rats, and jerboas. So what really makes a rodent a rodent? Surprisingly, just a few things. Mainly, their teeth. Firstly, they don't have canine teeth, which is a very common tooth with most other mammal species. What gives? It's mainly due to their common ancestors adapting for gnawing on hard items like nuts and trees and other tough things. What type of teeth did they need to adapt to live this kind of lifestyle? They're incisors. Rodent incisors grew out of a need to chew on everything they could find that was chewable, also known as everything. All teeth wear down as you use them, but rodent teeth are constantly growing, allowing the rodent to keep on chewing forever and ever. Actually, they have to keep gnawing on things to keep their teeth from growing too long, otherwise it'll be too hard to eat. Constantly growing teeth is both a blessing and a curse. The makeup of these teeth are also quite unique. Notice the orange surface on these teeth? It's not tooth decay, it's actually a layer of enamel that protects the outer surface of the tooth from wearing down too quickly. So where can you find rodents? Well, pretty much everywhere. Thanks to their supreme adaptability and their superior skills at hiding out on our seagoing vessels, rodents can be found on every single continent except Antarctica. In some cases, this has been detrimental to the native species there. I'm really sorry, New Zealand. Now let's take a look at three different rodent skulls and see what common features they all share and what other unique adaptations they have to help them survive in their own habitats. First off, the largest rodent species in North America and the second largest in the entire world, the North American beaver. The beaver lives a mostly aquatic lifestyle and to help with that, its eyes and ears are close to the top of its skull so that it can be aware of its surroundings without having to lift its entire head out of the water. Although if you notice, the beaver has relatively small eye sockets compared to the large size of the skull. That can be an indication of poor eyesight, and in this case, it is. The beaver also has heavy duty jaw bones to deal with all of the serious gnawing this guy does. Then you have these gigantic teeth. Notice how the softer part of the tooth gets worn down quicker than the hard orange enamel. Beavers need sturdy logs and branches to build their dams and lodges. Plus, the very tastiest leaves and twigs are always at the top of the trees, and a 50-pound rodent with short stubby legs isn't a very agile tree climber. The beaver's solution, of course, is just to chew down the whole tree. Next is a much smaller rodent, and probably one you're very familiar with, especially if you have a bird feeder. This is a fox squirrel. And unlike the beaver, they are excellent tree climbers. As you can see, it still has the classic rodent structure, but its eyes are relatively huge compared to the size of its skull. The squirrel needs to have great eyesight. It spends its day running through branches, leaping from tree to tree, and dodging hungry hawks and rowdy dogs. The squirrel's teeth are also much more delicate than other rodents, for gnawing small holes into nuts and acorns, and not so much cutting down trees. The last one is a very unique rodent, adapted more for life on the ground than in a tree or in the water. This is a chinchilla. You might think that chinchillas are just cute pets, but they're actually native to the Andes Mountains in Chile. These round parts on the back are called auditory bullae, 
which enhance their hearing. Because chinchillas hide around boulders and in rock crevices, they will probably be able to hear a predator approaching first, long before they actually see it. Well, there you have it, a few very different rodents that also have similarities within their family traits. Now, before we finish, I wanted to show you a few different animals that are commonly mistaken as rodents, but knowing what we know now, you should be able to tell that they aren't, right? First, a really common one, shrews. Now, they might look like little beady-eyed mice, but shrews are not rodents. Whereas most rodents are herbivores, or at least omnivores, Shrews are insectivores, but even they won't say no to meat if they can find it. Well, what about moles? Just take a look at this guy's skull. Do these look like rodent teeth to you? I don't know why they need such sharp, pointy, scary teeth for eating earthworms. Okay, one more, and it's a tricky one. Rabbits. Now, they do have the long, flat incisors that are continuously growing throughout their entire life, but rabbits are not rodents. Rabbits don't have the hard outer enamel layer that rodents do, and if you look very closely, they also have two teeny teeth directly behind their primary incisors. You will never see that on a rodent. Well, I hope everybody enjoyed learning about some of our planet's most successful mammals, and have a new appreciation for our big toothed friends. Now, go hug a rat today. If you love learning about cool naturey things, please like this video and subscribe to Everything Nature. Thank you very much!